Hey, uh, my daughter posted this last night, and usually she's not up this late, <coughs> but you'll understand why. She said, it's 12 a.m., I'm a half an hour in, into 21. It doesn't feel any different. It's it, is it supposed to? When I was a little girl, I remember wanting to grow up and get older and be a part of the big kids. Looking back, my nana always told me that it happened soon enough, but should really enjoy being a kid. Of course, never understand that. And it's taken 21 years to realize that. 21 years to realize, no, you actually can't go back either. 21 years understand that the littlest things actually the biggest ones and someone and you really go back. But I take everything I've learned in the past 21 years and use it to move forward and make good decisions. Learning is a process that never ends and I'm excited to see what the world has in store. I'm on my way into a helping profession where doing something I love so much will actually be my career. But that being said, it takes a lot and you have to be able to focus on yourself once in a while to make sure you can help someone else. So with that being said, and as silly as this may sound, I wanted to take the time to wish myself happy birthday. And she goes down here, she says, uh, I also wanted to take some time and acknowledge a few people that I have helped me get this far. Mom and Dad, thank you for teaching me right from wrong. Endurance. In the face of the world and the ability to love. I know you might feel that there are things you could have done better and choices you wished you would have made. But I tell you, you're not alone. Because I think parents feel that way. Every parent feels that way. Children, they're always watching and learning, even when they're two. So you may think that certain choices weren't the best. But you helped me learn from what you experienced. You guys make me feel like your favorite person in the world, especially when you laugh at all my dumb jokes. I miss you both more than you think. My point is, people, you heard it. My daughter, I'll fill you in a little bit in the back of her, and I'm not saying, I used to beat myself up and wondered what could I have did better. And I hope that I've done a good enough job for my daughter to learn and I used to kick myself and, and not think that I was a good father. But my daughter grew up in a family to where there was a lot of bitching and arguing and carrying on. And it inspired her to go out there and go to college and get good grades. At the age of 16, she told me, Mom, Dad, you're fixing to move and you're fixing to make it to where I can't stay in the same school that I'm at. She says, please let me live with my boyfriend. Well, I already knew that her and her boyfriend at the age of 16 kids these days, they're already doing the naughty naughty. And uh, she already let me know that in her own weird ways. <laughs> I didn't know that till later on. She she let me listen to a song and I forgot what the song listened to. Oh, I forgot what the song uh, was playing in the back, what she was playing me. And later on, I realized, man, she's tried to tell me that. I just wanted her to tell me when the time was right to let me know. So I, so she went in some car somewhere. And when she meant no, it meant no. And so I let her boyfriends come in the house. And I let her shut the door. Because that's her personal business. I felt that I needed to give that to her for those reasons. I didn't want her to wind up somewhere needing my help and the cry for help and it not be there for her. So I did condone that activity in my house. And I kind of regretted it. Because at the age of 16, she says, I don't want to live here no more. I can't stand you and mom at each other's throats. I need to stay in school. I want to make good grades. And I told her, you keep your average up to A's and B's. And try your hardest to become what you want to become in life. It is important that, that you get the education. Education is very important. And your daddy cut himself short on that.
So she moved out. And she finished high school. And you know how you stand up at the ceremony and you get to stand up and they acknowledge. And, and as, as you're going through the ceremony, <clears throat> you stand up and a lot of people stand up. And they acknowledge a lot of kids for this, of, of this, uh, what do you call it? Uh, mom, 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 mom. Accomplishments. And then they let all the kids sit down. And they let us sit down. And then a lot of kids walked off the stage. And I got to stand up again because they acknowledged these kids are a little more special. They got, they were acknowledged for these things. And I got to stand up again. My point is, I got to stand up five or six times. I can't remember. But when I stood up in that school, and there was only one other person. They got to stand up one more time by himself. One parents got to stand up one more time by themselves. They were very proud of their, their, their son. I was very proud of my daughter because I, out of all the people in the whole high school, got to stand up with one other family. So in other words, four of us were the only ones that got to stand up out of all the whole school. I was so proud of her. She had five or six ropes around her. She went to college, and she decided that she was going to do something. I don't know what it was, and then she changed, and she decided that she was going to become a child psychologist, and I said, okay, that's good. That's wonderful, and then two or three years into college, I get in my accident, and I break my leg, and I'm standing on the front porch, and she's, she's helping us pack our things. And me and uh, my wife, we got in an argument. We got in this argument. That truck that you've seen in one of my other videos that I've just recently posted, that blue and color, it had white fenders and a black hood and a red seat in it. That was my truck, and I drug it all the way down to Louisiana. My wife got in an uh, argument with me and told me, leave this pile of shit here. I don't want you having to stop and fiddle with the tires and worry about it getting, uh, just, it, it's hard to, God bless America, dog. He farted. <laughs> dog farts are terrible. But anyway, she started arguing me, wanting me to leave my truck there. And whoever wants it can come and get it. Or you can sell it to the neighbor down the street for $300. And I had a lot of money. I said, I'm not selling my truck for $300. I paid I paid uh, $1,500 for it, and it was just really kind of rough around the edges. You could start it and, and uh, drive it two foot, but that was about it. It needed a lot of other things like lights, and, and it needed a lot of things. It wasn't really road-ready and drivable. It needed the wiring done on it. It needed to be painted one color because I do not like driving crap around. And we were screaming and hollering at each other's throats. And she made me and my wife sit there, and my point is, she was be, she was counseling her fam her her fa her her parents, and she all she did was make one person sit down, and the other person sit down. She made us both sit down, no standing, and she she says, "Okay, mom, it's your turn." And mom started saying all these things. And bringing up the truck and this, that, and the other. And I started getting angry. And my daughter stopped me. She says, I'm trying to help you, Dad. Sit down and listen. And I sat back down and I listened. And I let my wife finish. And it took her about five or six times during the wife of me trying to, for her to try to talk. She made me listen to my wife. She made me sit there and listen instead of getting in a screaming ass, bla blazing ass, firing ass, raging argument. I had to sit there and listen. And I promised my daughter I would because she whispered in my ear, Daddy, please do this for me. And she says, Mom, you do this too. And so I sit there and I listen to my wife tell me everything and how she felt about the situation and all that. And then it was my turn and I talked to her. And I told her, I really want this C10 truck to be on the road. It's part of me. I love it. I want to have it. And then my wife says, okay, that's fine. I understand that. You want an antique classic 72 Chevy truck. And my wife told me, I already, me and your daughter already found one. It's at 
Fort Worth, Texas right now. It's waiting on you. I've already called the people. Man, I wish you would quit that farting. Whew, them dog farts are terrible. And I said, okay, you call the guy up or you text him or whatever and you tell him that I'm coming. He said, well, we haven't sold it yet. A lot of out-of-town people want it. But we don't want to, and he explained in the text that they want us to send it to them. They don't want to have to come and get it. And they didn't want to have to pay five grand for the truck and then more money to have it sent down there. It was just too much. So I was in hopes and I, I said, okay. I said, but I'm calling my buddy, Noe. He's going to come get the truck. And if I get into town and that truck is not available still, I want to still have my 72 Chevy truck so I can put the money into it to build what I want. And it had a 350 Chevy in it. I mean, a 350 uh, four bolt main in it. Had a good carburetor on it. I think it was a Holly double pumper. Man, that thing would burn the tires. Man, it was more powerful than this one ever was as far as smoking the tires. This this one is a standard. It 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 only uh <laughs> it's got an inline six in it. It didn't have that much power. But my point is my daughter went out there in the world and she fixed her she found a profession and she came home and she fixed her parents. And I always beated myself up about that. And when I read this text, it just brought tears to my face. I had tears pouring out of my eyes so much that my daughter wanted to get away from the pain and, and all the bull crap that we were putting her through. And she, stop that farting, man. That gum it. Man, you're running the video. Good Lord. Anyway, my point is, parents out there, listen to your children when they have something to say. When they're trying to tell you, mom and daddy, please don't fight and sit down and just listen to each other. That's all you got to do, people. That's all you have to do is just sit there and listen to one another. That's what counseling does. A counselor makes the people stand still and listen to each other. And that's all it was. My wife was wanting to give me something good and come up with a decision, but I wouldn't even let her have two words in because I thought that she was trying to take something that I really, really wanted. And now that I had plenty of money to fix it, she didn't want to go through all that bull crap to get it back home. So I called my buddy Noe up. He comes all the way from Fort Worth, Texas, comes, gets the truck. And I told him, I said, hey, man, if you can't, if I can't get this other yellow Chevy with Craigers on it, C10, then I'm going to have to end up paying you for the, for the, for the miles coming down there. And I'm going to have to end up buying it back from you more or less because that's a long way to go and a long a lot of time taken out of your butt to come down there and get my truck for me and that's all i gotta say people if you'll just listen to your children and quit putting them through all that damn crap you might not get lucky like me your child may not have the burning desire enough to get the good grades to have a college profession professionally embedded in, the, in them and you will probably I don't know how it, it, there's a my point is is my my daughter was put through so much that she wants to help other children in marriages and broken marriages she wants to be a counselor there for them Mar divorces are the number one thing in the nation that screw with children they don't deserve to be put through that crap. And if you can't get along, then don't get, be together. Don't sit there and put your children through that. I am so blessed that my daughter did that, man. That was one in a million shot. And now she's going to go up over. Her name is Faith, by the way. And this is going to be a long video because today is her birthday. And she's having a ceremony Thursday of this week. And it's a, it's a, it, she's getting an award. I get to go over there to the place. Hopefully, I make it. 
because I start my new job and it's not a good idea to tell the boss, hey man, I gotta leave work on Thursday and I got a doctor's appointment for my pain meds that I've been waiting for three months for, for them to give me the right medication to help with my pain. Aspirin and patches over the counter don't cut it. That's another story. But I get to stand up again and she's the only kid. She's getting the Employee of the Year Award at Texas Christian University. Only one person out of that whole college gets that award. And gets acknowledged for that. And she's only four foot eight tall. That's as tall as she's getting. She's always going to be my little girl. <laughs> God bless her soul. And I went and bought her some something for her birthday and every year we bought it we buy her things for her birthday and she happened to tell me the last birthday she you know y'all really cursed me with a name and i go why she says because every birthday i have people get me things that say faith on them we got her some bath towels that says faith on them and she's got a whole collection that just takes up it would take up a whole room because everybody in the whole family, I got a huge family. My grandmama had seven children. So you can imagine all the people sending birthday presents. And it feels a, it could fill a whole room up. <laughs> faith this, faith that, keep the faith. And every time somebody says have faith, <laughs> I remember my daughter. <laughs> and I do have faith. And I do keep the faith. Right here next to my heart. <laughs> Oh, man. Anyway, I'll let y'all go. And that's the end of the story. But, uh... <clears throat> oh, that's another thing. Everybody says, take that leap of faith. One of, one of my subscribers says, take the leap of faith, Limpy. Do it. You might regret it. And I forget what it was, but it was a situation... And I'm, I'm thinking of my daughter jumping rope. The leap of faith. <laughs> so my point is, I did give her the right name because I always think about it. Every time somebody says, have faith, uh, keep it up. <clears throat> and she's made some wise decisions out there on her own. And I just want to give good, good kudos to her. She has been a very good girl. And she's changed her parents, and I'm very blessed that she changed our lives. And now me and my wife actually get along. We cuddle. We're like a newlywed couple holding hands, going down to the store, going through the store, kissing in front of my son. And my son has never been around that. And he's going like, ooh, will y'all take that in the bedroom? Will you knock it off? Get a room. <laughs> and I looked at him. I said, son. I'm sorry that we didn't introduce you to this a long time ago, but this is what parents do when they really, truly love each other. They kiss. They cuddle. They hold hands. They want to be around each other. I want to actually ask my wife, how was your day today? How are things going? And if it's not going well, she tells me. She gets it off her chest. And she's not in a bad mood. Because I listen to her get things that bother her during the day off her chest and she does the same thing for me in the past my wife didn't want to hear that crap i would come home and i would try to ventilate a little bit and she says oh quit crying like a little titty baby and suck it out <laughs> and we would just and then i would go in my room and do whatever and she would go in her doom she would stay in we would we didn't want to be around each other constantly for that reason and I know I'm babbling on and cackling on like a damn hen in a hen house. But I'm just letting you know, letting you know, people out there, quit fighting in front of your children. Sit down and listen to one another talk. That's all it takes, man. Because you might not have the chance to have a daughter grow up, come home and fix you. And that's all she did. Something simple as that. Use those simple tools and, 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 ex, and explain what the other person meant. She did, in the middle of it, stop and say, okay, now I'm going to stop now. This is what she means when she's saying this. It might come across as a, as a rude thing to you right now, but this is what she's trying to tell you. And you need to listen. And then back and forth, back and forth for about 20 minutes on the porch of that Louisiana trailer, man. It was a trailer house 25 feet in the air, man. <laughs> because it was right in the flood zone. That's another thing, man. We came, we, we, we moved into our house, man. And uh, uh, our house, had when it flooded, our house had an alligator in it. 
could not believe it. The alligator smelt the food and the rotten food in the refrigerator. It was flooded for like two weeks. And the alligator swam in there and he was eating all the food in the house. <laughs> that is amazing to go through. And that's the reason why I had to move out of Louisiana, man. I got tired of the place getting tore up every time I turned around. It was always a hurricane every other year. Every third, every other year that something disaster, something happened. And relief would have to come and we would have to get in a boat. And I'd have to, I would have to pull my children in the boat with my wife through the water till we get to the car. You know, swim, paddle, and and I got tired of that crap. Up there, people are raised in that crap. They're used to that. I was from Texas. I'm not used to a bunch of boats and everything. I asked the lady when I rented the place, I said, what's the boat for? She says, oh, you're not from here, are you? I said, no, I'm from Texas. She says, well, you'll find out soon enough, and I did. It wasn't two or three months, and then I, I, I had to end up pulling my daughter and my kids and everything. I finally got a trolling motor, and we were just getting it. Wagging through all the crap, gas tanks floating, you know, them plastic gas cans floating all in the water. All the things that are plastic were floating everywhere. People were robbing and stealing out of people's houses, looting, going to the grocery stores and looting their stores and stuff. It's just a, it's just chaos, chaos, complete chaos in Louisiana. But anyway, man, I'm going to get off here and let y'all go, man. And y'all be good, man. And that's a, the thought, that's the food for the day. My daughter's 21.